All right, folks, so it's time to get the 3D background ready. Well, I've already done it, actually. And I've actually done it in a pretty slick way where no silicone, so I can put this thing right in the tank. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Uh, it's Thursday morning, 9.15, got in here about 7.30 this morning, started working on this thing. It's ready to go. I can put it in the tank right now. So let me show you what it is that I did, and then I'll try to get to some footage of... Uh, me actually executing this. So let's take a look and we'll see what we're going to do here. So sorry for the shakiness. I just got done using a Dremel tool and uh, my hands are a little, you know, shaky. <laughs> so here's the plan. Remember the notch that I was telling you about? <clears throat> well, here it is. How does that look? It's not a perfectly cut little notch. It's kind of got some shape to it. And, uh, and I've got my little fencing here that is held in. Fish aren't going to go back there. Now the way I did this, I had said on uh, the previous video that I was going to silicone it in, but I didn't do that. Instead, I drilled little holes and used little zip ties. Why not? They're plastic. They're not going to hurt anything. It's perfect. It holds it in there. Once this thing is up at the top of the aquarium and then there's water in it and everything, you're not even going to see those little black um, zip ties so it's perfect and I don't have to worry about silicone I don't have to worry about putting anything in the tank that's gonna harm the fish or anything like that so it's a win-win so the way this thing's gonna lay out uh, like I said before you see this pipe going through uh, it's a little crooked right now because it won't stand up on its own but that's where my FX6 intake is gonna pop through right there under uh, the Mount Rushmore nose there <laughs> I noticed that when I was watching my other video it looks like a I'm going to call that George Washington's nose. But anyway, uh, right there is where the intake for the FX6 is going to sit. And then I'm going to put the return right up there. Now you might say, well, why are you going to put them on the same corner? Well, that's because we're also going to have the sump. And that's what this notch is for. This notch is for the water to be able to get back there to get to the overflows. And the return for the sump is right there. Now obviously the pipe isn't going to be sticking out like that. Um, I put it there just kind of as an exaggeration to show you what we're doing. So if you can imagine that my sump return is going to perform as a return but it's also going to act almost like a circulation pump because it's going to push water on the bottom this way over to the FX6 and the return from the FX6 is going to push the top half of the water over to the overflow so it's going to almost be like a big circle which is going to be perfect and with me having sand in this tank which I'm super stoked to show you I just got it yesterday um, it's going to be critical to have water movement down there at the bottom of the tank to wash all that fish poop over to one of the filters so uh, I'm excited to see how this thing works I'm going to try I, I filmed a lot of footage of me actually making these alterations I'm going to try to show that uh, as much of it as I can being here by myself with the tripod, it's kind of difficult to get good angles and everything. But I'm going to try to show you how I got that all done. And uh, we're going to get this thing in the tank possibly today. We'll see. Okay, now there's plenty of different ways to cut this material. I elected to go with the jigsaw for this notch only because I was afraid that if I used a knife or some type of handsaw or something like that, you can slip and end up cutting too far. I suppose you could say the same thing about a power saw like this, but I'm a woodworker by trade. Uh, that's how I've made my living for the last 10 years. So I'm pretty comfortable with that kind of a saw in my hand. Now, um, the, the, it is kind of, well, there you see it right there. It kind of jumps on you a little bit because you're not dealing with something that's you know, secured. Uh, it is a little bit wobbly. So it can be a, a little bit adventurous when it comes to using a saw like that, but um, this is a really easy material to cut, and I, I could have done it with a bunch of different things, but, you know, the, the jigsaw just made sense. A friend of mine decided to let me borrow his because mine got stolen, and, uh, well, you know, there's a whole other story behind that. So what you see me doing here is I'm just kind of adding a little bit of, I don't know, shape to it so that it's not looking so much like a man-made notch cut out of the top of this thing. I wanted to have it, you know, be a, a little bit more natural than um, just a big circle cut out of there or something like that. So 
that's what I'm doing there. Apparently, I'm struggling a little bit with it, but uh, you know, the saw is a little tricky to use. You can see it bouncing up and down there, it makes it a little tough, but uh, I got through it without any problems, and the end result mm -hmm. actually looks pretty good. So, um, just kind of finishing up the the final little extra little shapes, and then uh, looks like we're going to move on to showing how we we it was me how I uh, actually secured this fencing material to it. Now, there's a lot of ways that this could have been done. I could have siliconed it and, uh, you know, but I wanted to put this thing in the tank today. And I did put it in the tank today uh, because I was able to use these little zip ties here. Uh, maybe a little unorthodox, but some people might look at it as innovative. I don't know. But, you know, these zip ties are, are perfectly safe to use in the aquarium. And there's no waiting 24 hours for it to cure. So, you know, it's kind of a perfect scenario here. So all I did was drill a hole kind of through at an angle and then used the leftover material uh, of the background to run my zip tie through and, and secure that thing into place. Now, I drilled about seven or eight uh, individual holes to hold this thing on. I'm not going to show you all of those. You get the point. And there is... The finished product, uh, well, no, it's not the finished product because what I'm doing now is going through with the Dremel and I'm just kind of rounding over those jagged edges from the saw, um, you know, again, in an effort to just kind of make it look a little bit more natural. If you keep hearing that noise, that blam in the background, that's emails from you um, that are uh, usually YouTube emails. That's actually the notification for YouTube. So somebody probably subscribed or commented. So I'll have to look at that once I'm done recording this. But but anyway, again, with the Dremel here, I'm just going through and again, just trying to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, you know, it's a, it's a piece of black fencing <laughs> installed into this notch. So you can't make it look too natural. I suppose I could have come in with modeling paints and stuff like that. Uh, I saw a really good article on cichlidforum.com uh, by Chuck Green, who's actually a friend of mine. He's actually the guy that gave us our uh, Pundamilla Neri Rudy Islands, if you've seen my video about those. Um, super nice guy. He did a fantastic article about prepping 3D backgrounds. Um, and he'd probably be insulted by the way I've done this because he did his so perfectly. But uh, he painted his and, and everything else, and it looked really, really good. You couldn't even tell that there were any notches cut out of it. Um, so, okay, now we're down here at the bottom. Uh, this is where I'm putting my return for my sump system. Uh, it's a one inch pipe that uh, I popped through the bottom there and I got the, the hole started with a uh, regular old drill bit. I didn't have one big enough. So what I'm doing with the knife there is just kind of uh, enlarging that hole. And, oh, where are you going? What are you doing, John? Oh, I had to go get the bigger knife. It turned out that that didn't work either. Uh, and you're going to see me in a second. I might even get up and walk away again, but I, I grab the Dremel tool and I use that to make the hole larger. And, and the funny thing is, is I actually didn't make it large enough. And when it was in the tank and I was running the pipe to it, I had to stick my knife down in there and make it even larger. Um, long story, but... This material is very simple to deal with. The reason why it looks like I'm struggling with it right there is because when you're using a knife, it's very easy to slip with that knife. Now, obviously, slipping with a knife could end up putting a lot of blood on the floor, but it could also end up cutting a huge slit in this thing where you don't want it and end up looking like garbage. So it's not that I'm struggling with the material. It's more... I'm taking my time and I'm just going really, really slow so that I don't slip with that blade and cut my hand off and not be able to finish this 240 project or ruin this background, this absolutely gorgeous background that, that Universal Rocks was so nice to send to us. I, I don't want to ruin it. So I'm taking my time, taking it slow, and, uh, and it worked. You know, I didn't end up doing anything that uh, or you know making any mistakes any slips or anything like that um and and you know even come close to ruining this piece and it's because i took my time now you guys know because you've watched the other videos i hope 
Universal Rocks sent me this. Um, they they were nice enough to send it as a sponsor of this project, so it's not a big secret. I didn't pay for this background, folks. But let me tell you this: when you get yours and you pay for it, you're going to want to work even slower than I'm working there, because this piece is very valuable to me, even though it was it was just given to us. Um, I'm earning it right now. I'm earning that that background. So you know it was given to us, but you know, there is a, a price to pay, I guess you could say. So I am earning it right now. But, you know, if I had taken money out of my pocket and paid for this and slipped with the knife and ruined it, I, I mean, uh, there's, there would have been a lot of four letter words. Thankfully, I'm talking over it and you wouldn't have heard those. I mean, it would have been disastrous. So take your time. It, you know, you might take a little longer than what you want, but in the end, if you don't ruin your background, you're going to be a lot happier. I know this stuff is boring to watch, but, you know, I told you that I was going to show you every single part of the process. There I go. I just walked away, and there's the good old Dremel tool. I've just got a sander on there, one of those round sanders, and I'm just going in there and um, making the hole bigger so that the pipe will slip through. Um, but like I said before, I didn't make it big enough, but, um, you know, it's working. It's in there. I do have to do some adjusting to it because it is blowing the sand around. Um, might end up putting it up a little bit too low, but I'm thinking that I might be able to use some of the uh, directional, or excuse me, the decor decorative rocks. It's late. I've been here all day. Um, the decorative rocks that they sent me, I might be able to strategically place those to kind of divert the water um, so that it's not blowing the sand around. So, okay. This is the real exciting part. <laughs> you get to look at my feet. This is just another hole. I'm cutting up into uh, George Washington's nostril there. Um, and that is for the intake tube for the FX6. Um, same exact procedure as the last one. Drilling a hole to get it started. Actually, this one, since it's a larger hole, um, I drilled several holes and then used the knife to cut out the material in between where the drill bit didn't get through. Um, you know, that would just made more sense to do that. I didn't want to come into this thing with a gigantic drill bit. I felt like that might, you know, grab and tear. I was a little afraid of that and I wasn't in a hurry. So, you know, drilling smaller holes and then, you know, just kind of fine tuning it with the knife and, and getting it out of there to me was, was perfectly acceptable. It didn't matter if this thing took me two hours. It took a lot longer than this video is showing. Um, I think this whole process here took me, it probably took me about an hour. Uh, I'm not showing you every single part, but I think the whole thing start to finish, including, you know, gathering the tools and, uh, and preparing everything and all of that, uh, setting up the camera. I think all in all, it took about an hour. Um, but I am a slow, kind of a methodical worker uh, when it, with whatever it is that I do. And, you know, it might take me a little longer than it would to you. So, but that's okay because in the end, you know, you want this thing to be perfect. So now do you see, there, there's a big selling point right there. Do you see how I'm just whipping that thing around? I'm picking it up, moving it around, flipping it over. That's an eight foot long by two foot tall 3D background, folks. I mean, and look how light it is. I could have put this thing into the tank today by myself. Um, I didn't because I didn't want to scratch the tank up any more than it's already scratched up. So I did enlist, uh, enlist the friend of a... All right, there I go again. Enlist the help of a friend. He came in and helped me put the thing in the tank. Uh, and we got it all tied in with the, with the piping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you, Joe, if you're watching. So... You know, take your time with it. This is something that costs a lot of money. You do not want to ruin this thing. Um, and, you know, you want it to be right in the end. You don't want to have to pay for a second one because you ruined the first one. So, again, the procedure here was exactly the same. This one's taken me a little bit longer because it's a larger hole. Um, using the drill bit, fine-tuning it or finessing it with the knife... And then I think I come back with the Dremel tool, but maybe not. Um, 
Actually, I did, but I didn't put that on camera. You can see I'm really, really struggling to put that pipe through there. Um, and I wanted it to, to kind of go through more smoothly. Now, that pipe is obviously not the input pipe for the FX6, but it's very, very similar in size. So I, I wanted to have a little bit of movement there, but not a hole big enough so that fish could swim up through there. With the FX6 intake, I think I've got maybe a quarter of an inch of play. So there you go, folks. That's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Go to www.universalrocks.com. You will absolutely not be disappointed. And thanks for watching.